I get asked a lot of questions both on and off YouTube regarding the DualSense controller and pretty much all those questions can amalgamate into one and that is should I buy the DualSense controller for PC gaming? Well today we're going to be answering that question and helping you guys make the right decision when it comes to purchasing one of these controls. There's a few questions you have to ask yourself before you buy this controller. One of those being is are you willing to install third party software in order to run this properly? Now what I mean by that is whilst this controller works pretty much completely fine across almost every single Steam game, it is not going to work the same way an Xbox controller would work on PC where you can just pretty much plug and play on any game on any platform on a PC. When I say any platform I mean on different game launchers and stuff like that. This controller for example is not just going to work on Game Pass by just plugging the controller into the computer and then playing the game. You are going to have to install third party apps like DS4 Windows and DualSense X which by the way I have videos on which will be linked down in the description if you do want to see how to install those. They are super easy to install, they do not take up much space on your PC and literally the installation is so simple you install it you plug a controller and it connects to the app and then you're free to play it on pretty much any game that is on the PC. So yeah number one thing to consider is are you willing to install these third party softwares? It doesn't take much time, but I know some people are uncomfortable doing it. Personally, I've been using this third party software for over a year now and I've had no issues with them. So yeah, they are safe to use, but it's something that understandably some people are not going to want to do. The next question you're going to want to ask yourself is how much do you really care about the adaptive triggers which are built into the DualSense controller? If this is something that you're super focused on and you're buying a controller for this feature, then maybe it's not the right decision. There is apps, again, third party software that can make the adaptive triggers work to some extent, but they're never going to work how they do on the PS5 unless the games on the PC have got it natively supported. And what I mean by that is certain games like Black Ops Cold War uh, and Deathloop have got native PS5 DualSense support with adaptive trigger feature built into it. So it works exactly how it would on a PS5. But then you also have a ton of games that do not have native support on for the PS5 controller on PC which is probably going to be the majority of games you'll be playing. So you are going to need to use third party software to get this feature working. And the issue with this software is that whilst it does get the trigger feedback going, it is not the same adaptive trigger feedback that you get on PS5. Because with these apps, you actually have to adjust it yourself. It can't read what's going on in the game. So the triggers aren't actually going to adapt. You have to actually pretty much adapt them yourself, which can get frustrating if you're playing games where you're constantly switching guns. So the feel is going to constantly change. But it's a lot more easy to use on story based games or racing games where you can pretty much set the trigger to one fill and it will just work across the board. Again, the third party app that makes this possible is DualSense X, which has quite a big variety of options to choose from with a preset adaptive trigger layouts, or you can use your own custom ones. DS4 also has got an option for adaptive triggers, but there's only very few options to choose from. So if you are buying the controller and you do want adaptive triggers on PC, then I'd recommend going down the DualSense X route, which again, I have a video on and I'll have it linked down in the description. Next up, let's talk about connectivity. It's all good having these third party softwares and that running on your computer, but how are you actually going to connect this controller to your computer? Are you going to be using a wire or Bluetooth? I would recommend using Bluetooth because for some reason on certain games, when you plug this controller in using a wire, it doesn't work the same way it would do if you was playing it on a Bluetooth connection. I'm not sure why that is, but yeah, go down the Bluetooth route if you're going to be using this controller. And if you don't have Bluetooth already built into your PC, you can buy these little Bluetooth adapters on Amazon, which are about £15, I think, maybe even cheaper than that. Oh, and if you are buying a Bluetooth adapter, make sure it is 4.0 or higher. Do not buy one lower than that because it might give you connection issues. Next up, let's talk about battery life. Now, these things have got really, really good battery life. Uh, Sony has officially said that these get around 12 to 15 hours depending on usage. However, we all know that game companies can lie a bit when it comes to battery life. I tend to get about 9 to 10 hours out of this before needing to recharge it, which again is still a really, really good battery life. But I have gone ahead and bought two so that if I do forget to charge one of them, I will always have one charged up so that when this one's charging, I'll use this one. And when this one's charging, I'll use this one. Just good to have two controllers so that you can rotate in case you do forget to charge one of your controllers up. It can be super frustrating when you're trying to play a game and your controller just dies. And like I said, plug and play is not the best option for the DualSense controller on PC. So yeah, battery life and no complaints there. It is really good. It lasts for a long time. But yeah, if you can afford it, then definitely buy a second controller and that way you'll never run out of battery. Stick drift. Is it an issue with this controller? I've got to say, unfortunately, yes, it is. But there is a way to buy controllers that are less susceptible to this issue, which we'll talk about in just a second. So this controller I bought when the PS5 launched. So it is essentially a like first gen controller. Whereas I don't know if you guys know, um, as console lifespans get older and whatever, they do small updates to controllers and small updates to the consoles just to make them a little bit better when they're shipping them out. 
This controller, like I said, is a first gen controller pretty much. And one way to tell if your controller is a new controller or an old controller is to look at the back of the controller. On the back, you'll see a barcode on it. And if it ends in one, that means that you've got an older controller. But if it ends in A, that means that you've got a newer controller. And the newer controllers are less susceptible to stick drift. One way to ensure you get a new controller is to buy one from the Galaxy range. So that would be the pink, blue or purple controllers. You can still get new controllers from the black and white ones. It's just that you have a higher chance of getting a new one from the Galaxy range since those are new controllers. Whereas the black and white ones came out when the PS5 came out. I know the black one came out a little bit after the PS5 came out, but it is still before they made the updates to the controllers. So yeah, that is one way to make sure you do not get a controller that is going to be susceptible to stick drift. One thing I will say, I've had this controller for more than a year now, and whilst it does get stick drift, it is not really bad. It's like literally very, very minor. Um, and I could probably fix it to be honest. I'd probably just need to take this controller apart and have a look at what's going on inside. But yeah, stick drift is an issue, it's not a big one. Try to buy a newer controller from the Galaxy range and you should avoid this happening to you. Now, lastly, if this is your first time buying a controller for PC, or if you normally play on keyboard and you just want to buy a controller for casual PC gaming, then I would say buy one of these. This thing that you can see attached to the bottom of my controller is extra buttons. Basically, these are like flappy paddles. So what this does is it allows me to map certain buttons to these instead, rather than having to click the D-pad and stuff like that. This is extremely helpful if you're playing games like Forza and you want to just change gears very easy without clicking the square or circle buttons. Or if you're playing games like Call of Duty and you want to slide cancel and gun buck, you don't have to take your hands off any of the thumbsticks. You can just use these to do that. These are very easy to set up and install. I've got a video on how to do that as well, which I'll leave linked down in the description. And I think they cost about £35. So to answer your question, should I buy a controller for PC gaming? Well, that is something that I cannot directly answer, but hopefully I've given you guys the tools to go away and think about it and see whether it is right for you. I can give you my personal opinion and I would say there is no other controller that I would use on PC other than the DualSense controller and that is just because I love it so much. It is so comfortable to use. I personally like the third party apps that allow you to use these features on PC. I think it's cool and just massive props to the people that develop those apps. And also I can really see PS5 controllers getting a lot more support on PC in the future. If you look at when the PS5 controller just came out until now, there has been so much more updates on PC to allow support for the PS5 controller. And a lot of new games that are being released on PC are coming with native support. So you don't even have to worry about the third party apps for them. So yeah, in my opinion, I would always buy a DualSense controller. I'm probably going to buy another one as well because I want one from the Galaxy range. But when it comes to you guys, as I said, you have to make your own decision. And hopefully I've made that a little bit more easier for you guys to do. And if you guys did enjoy this video and found it helpful, then don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and turn on bell notifications. Because I upload content just like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.